A key question when we create or instantiate an object from a class is how is data actually initialized. In our case we have our cake but we want to ensure when we create a cake that it has a plate for example and eight slices by default. How would we done this in C? Well we would have created a function like cake underscore init that would have set for a structure these member variables explicitly to true for plate and eight for slices. In C++ there is a very fancy concept called constructors and destructors that automatizes this process a little bit and removes from the user the need to call functions like cake in it or cake free something like that explicitly. In fact constructors are called when an object is created automatically. Destructors are called when an object is deleted from the stack or the heap and again it's done automatically. So how do, how do these constructors and destructors look like? So the constructor is a special member function. Uh -huh. That means we, we can think about it like a normal function, but it just has to have a special name and it has to have the same name as the class. So in our case, we could have a function called cake with brackets. It has no return value, which is actually mandatory. You cannot return anything from a constructor because it in fact returns the objects basically. And uh, you can have many constructors with different arguments to create different type of objects, vary the content of the objects with useful presets, so psi or defaults. The destructor now is the opposite of the constructor. It's a function that cleans up the data members. So typically you free memory on the heap but you can involve other behavior like closing files, printing out messages and so forth. It has no arguments and no return types and there exists only one destructor and it has the name like here tilde cake in this case. So again the same name as the class but preceded by a tilde and you will find only one destructor. Yeah, because it doesn't make sense to have different ways of removing an object. So how do we define a cake constructor and destructor with a class? Well, we will add it first of all to our UML diagram and it needs to have a public interface typically. So we see here cake and our tilde cake, which is the destructor. We have to put it in our HPP file. It n neither of them returns anything. So in this case, we, we just put them identically to our header file. And now we have to implement them. So here we have our constructor. And remember the constructor is called every time a new instance of a class is made. And we de in our case, we declared a constructor that doesn't take any argument. But what we wanted to do is we wanted to set the B play to be true and the number of slices to be eight. Now we can do that as easy as this. And in the destructor what we want to do, well, we want to set remove the plate and the number of slices set them to zero. Well, this is a very artificial destructor here. Normally you would remove any memory allocation to prevent memory leakage and do some more fancy stuff, but this is really just an example for a destructor. So let's talk about a program that now uses our K class. Of course it has to include the header and this now can be a file called main cpp where we find this content over here. What we do we create a cake 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 one so we this is actually a definition right so and we declare cake one to be of type cake which the compiler knows is a class and we also define it reserve memory and when we do that here, we know we reserve memory on the stack. And at this point, the constructor will be called. And so we can, when we print get slices, we will get the answer 8. So I would say this is very nice because it automatizes this idea of pre-filling and creating an object, but it hides a little bit the idea what's going on right so in C you would 
if you have done that, you would have created a variable, but you would have had to call a function like cake init. This would have made it very explicit that you have initialized the cake. In C++, this behavior is implicit, and everyone assumes when you create an a variable like here, that instantiates an object or represents an object, and there is instantiates the object, um, that it is already well initialized by a constructor. So really this is implicit and you have to understand that. Okay, now what we can do is we can try to eat the slice and if that works, yeah, we have eaten the slice, right? If it doesn't work, well, sorry, we have we print, sorry, no cake left. So we can repeat this step, eat slice and so on many times. And after eight times we know there will be no cake left and we can call this function get slices. Yeah, so this is now one cake and you can create multiple cakes at the same time and they have different memory as there would be different memory when you use a structure. Right, so here we see a second cake. We have cake two. Also an, an instance of this cake blueprint, the cake class, but it has a different memory. Yeah, and it has still all its slices. Right, um, now let's do a little task. So as we know, we can change the constructor to include additional arguments. And I want you to change the K constructor now to allow setting the, the number of slices, but by default it should use eight if not provided. So that means we have to use this idea of uh, optional arguments from C++ and we have to manipulate this a little bit. Think about it for three minutes and then unpause the video. Pause the video now and uh, I will reveal the answer in a second. Three, two, one. So the solution is that we have to change the K constructor to allow setting the number of slices. So by default, first of all, you would say something like slices equals eight and then you say I slices become slices and of course here we have to add a data type. Well, let's make it integer so we would have added int slices equals eight here. 